Welcome back to The Advocator. Once again, my name is Demetrius Parson. I am the host of the show for today, and we're going to be speaking about Alzheimer. Now, I have some young ladies on my show today that will share some information that I hope will be very helpful to you. And we're going to start at the far end, and we're going to speak with our first young lady. If you could just introduce yourself and give us the organization that you are with. I am Barbara Glover, the owner and artistic director of Miss Barbara School of Dance in Buffalo, New York. Great. My name is Megan Fidel. I'm the director of education and training at the Alzheimer's Association. Thank you. Hi. My name is Rachel Rotach. I'm the director of advocacy and early stage services at the Alzheimer's Association. Great, great. Now, we want to start our discussion out with just asking, what are some of the warning signs of Alzheimer? Okay, sure. Uh, you know, some of the signs with Alzheimer's can be, um, you know, some memory loss. And often when we say memory loss, we mean short term. So, you know, it's not something you did 10 years ago. It's something okay. that you forgot about this morning. Um, another thing could be, you know, forgetting what, you know, season it is. You know, it's not, oh, I don't know what day of the week it is. That's normal. We all forget that. But, you know, if you're like, if you think it's a few years ago, there might be an issue there. Um, basically, anything that affects memory, thinking, or behaviors um, is, is when you, you have a problem that you want to get checked out. Okay. Is All there right. anything you would add to that? Yeah, if there's things that you did every day of your life or that, say you were a numbers person and you ba balance that budget, you know, every month and you were so on that, and now that things like that that are becoming more difficult, things that you used to do all the time um, that you're starting to have trouble with, that's also can be a sign too that you want to at least get, get it checked out with your physician. Okay. Now what's, what's the difference between the Alzheimer and the dementia? What's, what's the difference between that? That's a great question, and dementia is actually kind of a category heading. It's kind of like how you have cancer, and then you have many different kinds of cancer. Similarly, you have dementia, and then there's so many different kinds of it, and Alzheimer's happens to be the most common. So about 70% of all <coughs> cases of dementia are Alzheimer's, but there are many other kinds. Okay. Now, is this something that just uh, affect elderly people, or... Is there an age range that you see that it mostly affects or? Well, age is actually the most common risk factor for developing Alzheimer's. Um, you know, typical age, I would say, you know, your likelihood continues to increase, you know, as you age. Um, you know, it's most common, you know, age 85 and plus. It's very common, but it can happen much younger. There's a, you know, a younger onset that can happen, you know, over the age of 45. But there have been cases as young as one in Buffalo, I believe, was around 23 years old. Okay. And what are, what are some of the warning signs? I mean, like, I forget stuff every now and then. So is that one of the warning signs? I know you said, like, balancing books. But, like, when, do, which, when should you go and see a doctor? What's, like, one of the signs that would make you think, I need to go see a doctor about this? Well, it, it could be something where, you know, we all forget where we leave our keys. But if you end up finding your keys in the freezer, that's a sign. <laughs> um, you know, if you have that neighbor who's lived next door for 30 years, you know their name, they know your whole life story, but you can't remember their name one day, that's a sign you might want to look into. Um, you know, when people start to forget the names of those close to them, that's when they might want to withdraw a little bit and not want to put themselves in those social situations. So maybe it's, it's that person you know who um, is no longer coming to church anymore. Mm. And it might be because when they walk into that, that room and they see the congregation of 50 people and they don't know people's names, they might be embarrassed. Mm. So it's just, you know, one example. Okay. Now, as far as um, the family members, like, what type of, do you have any type of support system for the families that, um, because they're also involved, right? Mm -hmm. So is there some type of support system for those families? There is, and you know, they say that any one person with Alzheimer's, it affects about three more people because caregiving is such, such a huge task. It really is, and you can't just care for some, some one person alone. Um, so it's important that caregivers reach out to, to get those sort of resources and the kind of help um, in those situations. It's really important. And one um, service that we offer is there's actually a helpline number we have. 
It's 1-800-272-3900. And that number, if you call it, you can talk for free to a care consultant. And there are people who are really trained in dementia care who can provide all sorts of um, tips, all sorts of resources for someone in that situation. Another nice thing about it, too, is that it's 24 hours and it's seven days a week, which is nice. So if you're a caregiver, let's say it's the middle of the night and you're just absolutely stressed out and you're at your limit, you can call that number and talk to a trained social worker on the phone and, and be able to get some you know, tips on how you can care for yourself, too. So this is something that you don't necessarily have to be hospitalized for or in some type of a nursing home. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Like you have um, people who are actually at home and they're dealing with this. Right, this disease can last from you know, two to 20 years roughly. So the majority of people are at home and they are learning how to adapt their lives to live with this on a daily basis. And so that's why you know the first thing we go to is usually call this helpline because you know at the beginning it might be is this Alzheimer's? And then this can be your constant resource, you know, years down the line for, I really need a, I think I might need a support group. Mm -hmm. You know, there's somebody else out there dealing with this and we want you to know you're not alone. And so, you know, a support group it can be getting together with other people going through similar situations who really, you know, are there to, you know, lend a hand and, and be that sounding board. And that's what we often do. Um, sometimes people call just to vent. You know, they said, this has been an awful week. Um, Mom has happen. asked me 30 times today for the same thing. My phone is off the hook. You know, what can I do? And that's when you call and you talk to, you know, a care consultant. And, you know, that's something Megan and I both do. And we're, we're there to pick up the phone and say, try this, try that. If not, call us back. And, and that's what we try to do. And that's important for the caregiver to be sure that they keep themselves healthy and, and, and mm -hmm. talk with others who are dealing with the same situation, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. They say about 68% of spouses actually pass away before their loved one with the disease, just because it's not only an emotional toll on them, but it's also mm -hmm. a very physical toll on their health, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, um, before our show, um, we had a discussion, and Ms. Barbara, you were sharing um, something about a relative of yours. Um, can you tell us about that experience? Right. Well, my, my aunt, <coughs> who had dementia, and, um, um, you know, she was home, but as I said, we were blessed. Um, we, she was able to attend church every week. We were able to take her to, you know, social events. She may not have known, you know, the people, but, you know, she always had that smile and it was always, you know, up. And, um, you know, we were able to keep her home as time went on. Um, and, um, you know, the disease, um, you know, got worse. <coughs> then that's when it became, you know, a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, me being the younger person, you know, her mother, my mother and um, her sister were very close. And I think that what happens is the person that is closest to that individual is the one that they seem to, you know, beat up on the most. Right. So uh, between the two of us, you know, I would handle answers, getting her dressed and, you know, and getting her to do what she needed to do. And, and that, that was, in itself was tough, you know, and then trying to keep my mother healthy, you know, because it upset her with this is her sister, you know, someone who was very close. So that's why I said it's important that, you know, the caregiver um, be among, you know, individuals who are experiencing the same thing for their emotional, um, you know, stability. <clears throat> okay. Now, is there, you know, being that you both work and you, you've experienced, is there some type of medication involved in, you know, that will um, maybe decrease some of the symptoms that they're having? There are some medications out there. Um, right now, there's no medication to cure this disease, unfortunately. That's something that we're hoping down the road that will be developed at some point. But right now, um, there are a few common ones. Um, one, one really common one is Aricept, um, Nemenda, Exelon. Mm -hmm. Those are all very common. And they don't actually slow the, the progress of the disease because they don't treat the cause. But they can help with some of those symptoms. They can help reduce memory loss. They can help um, reduce some confusion for a time. And the earlier people get treatment, the more effective it tends to be. And that's one reason why it's so important if you're noticing signs in yourself or in someone you love, you want to make sure you see the physician. Um, not only because the treatment tends to be more effective early on, 
but also because there's so many other conditions too that you want to make sure you rule out. Mm -hmm. um, things like depression, thyroid conditions, uh, stress. stress, you know, um, also uh, UTIs or urinary tract infections or any wow. sort of affection. Those, those can <coughs> all look like Alzheimer's mm -hmm. but actually be very treatable. So you really want to see that physician as soon as, as, soon as, as, soon as you're noticing some of those warning signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as far as um, the, I'll say the care giving that you, you guys have, is there some way that um, we can find out about how we can volunteer for the service? Sure, we're always open to having volunteers and people to help out. Um, you know, one of the things we, we always need help with is we like to offer a break to caregivers and have them and offer a safe place for them to bring their loved one, you know, for a couple hours so they can have time to themselves or to run errands, whatever it is they need to do. And so we're always looking for volunteers to help with that. Um, when people want to get involved, sometimes it might be helping to teach a class or to attend a walk. Um, we, we have quite a few walk to end Alzheimer's every year and it's a good way to show support for the people who are living with the disease and, and just to you know, get involved in more things. And what would you say uh, a daily routine would be if someone was to you know, um, be at the facility like um, I'm sure you serve um, like meals, um, you have activities or maybe some type of craft or how do you, how do you basically keep them uh, moving and you know what's it what's it what's the day like well the more in-depth care that you're talking about is something that we often you know refer to agencies in the community that do um, you know if people are looking for a, a day-long break you're going to be looking at um, adult day centers options like that for what we do at the chapter it's more um, you know brief two to three hour breaks and sometimes we do have food involved We'll do, you know, brain activities. We'll do crossword puzzles as a group. Um, you know, play different games. There, a, a little bit of everything, bingo, um, potluck meals, things like that to really stay active because that social interaction is just so important. And you know, staying involved. You know, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, at nighttime, all of a sudden they have this burst of energy and they call it sundowning. Well, one way to help, you know, kind of word against that is to keep active during the day. Um, and so that's something we certainly promote. And adult and day centers, you have some experience with that. Right, don't you? I um, <coughs> teach uh, seniors, you know, that are, are line dancing. Mm -hmm. Because it's in, in, in dancing, I think, is <coughs> one of the, um, you know, most important forms of activity. Um, of course, you know, dance is, is complex and um, it exercises the body as well as the mind. And so keeping the seniors actively, frequently dancing um, exercises their, their brain, especially, um, and, and an especially good form of dance is uh, ballroom dancing mm. because um, it, you're continually um, uh, have to be quick thinking, you know, and uh, you have to the lead and follow. Mm -hmm. um, you never know what your partner is, you know, going to do where he's going to lead you, and right. you have to follow. So you're you're constantly um, exercising, you know, that that brain. So that's a good form of dance for um, to ward off or uh, reduce the risk of um, mm -hmm. dementia. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's stay right there. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to learn more about the Alzheimer. We're basically going to talk uh, with Miss Barbara and her dance school and how it actually helps us. So don't change that dial.
And we're back. Uh, we, we, this is The Advocator, and we were actually talking about Alzheimer, and we were talking to Miss Barbara. And um, Miss Barbara, how many years have you been doing this? Well, Miss Barbara School of Dance is 47 years wow. old. Okay, great. And um, of course, I started dancing as a young child and um, continued uh, my study in dance and opened the school, and I teach children and adults. Um, What's your age range? From two years old to adults. Okay, all right. And like, where? How did you? You know, how did you get started? Because I, I know that you know, opening up a, a dance studio must have been something. It wasn't popular back then. So how did you get started? Well, I actually, my parents actually put me in dance school um, at the recommendation of a doctor because that's a bow-legged little girl. Oh. They thought <laughs> that you know that would you know kind of correct it. And as time went on, you know, I um, started with tap and then the jazz, and then uh, my two brothers began to dance, and um, I was um, going to the Y, Humboldt Y, okay. and um, the director of the Y went, went to one of my recitals, and he says, you know, I think you're a very selfish person. You have a talent <laughs> that should be shared with, you know, the, the community. And the dance school started at the Humble Y. And from there, it um, grew. And 47 years later, here I am. <laughs> wow. That, that's exciting. Um, what about uh, working with the elderly people um, who are facing challenges of Alzheimer and um, dementia? How, how do you bring that into play? Well, you know, it, it's a joy working with um, the seniors. Right now, I'm. Uh, teaching seniors at the St. John Towers, okay. as well as um, the Family Life Center of St. John. And it just amazes me, you know, they come down in their wheelchairs, and even sitting in the wheelchairs, you know, the music gets to them, even if they're just moving their feet or, you know, waving their hands, they may not be able to get up, but then there are some that will actually get up, and maybe they're on the floor for, you know, two, three minutes. But, um, and it keeps their minds working. They're trying to learn those steps, you know. Um, I try to challenge them um, each week with new uh, steps, okay. you know, new dances. Takes them a little while longer to, you know, get it in their muscle memory, but it keeps them thinking. And it, you know, it challenges them because they want to learn how, you know, they want to know the dances. Those that, you know, are uh, physically able and always wanted to, get on the dance floor to dance. I mean, it's amazing how, um, you know, how well they're doing. It may take them a little while, but they're learning. And it seems like every week there's more and more seniors coming down. They hear about it and they, I mean, <laughs> it's just a joy working with them. And then when they get it, you know, I give them a high five, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them will come down and they'll say, oh, I just, I can't do that. I just can't. Yes, you can. Because I break it down, you know. We'll just repetition you, until they get it, you know. And then the next week they'll come back and they've got it. So, um, you know, that's a new experience for me okay. because I've, you know, all these years been, been working with children. I mean, you know, adults, is, adults too, but um, not as much as the kids. So. Um, I'm really enjoying that myself, and it really gives me a good workout as well. You know, it's a good cardio for them. Mm -hmm. You know, in addition to uh, exercising their their uh, brain, it's a good cardio. And I, I I challenge them every week. I said, okay, if we got if you got through this dance, you know, it's five minutes. Let's see if we can get through, you know, ten minutes straight through ten minutes. You know, and to the hour, you know, we can get through, you know, five, six um, line dances, one right after the other in an hour, you know, wow. thinking about that, that cardio, that, uh, you know, that exercise. So um, I, I think that that's an a excellent way to uh, reduce, you know, the risk of um, dementia, mm -hmm. keeping that mind uh, working all the time. This is like crossword puzzles or, you know, something that's different, not something that's memorized, that you have the same patterns and the same steps every week, you know. Okay. Now, because you're so passionate about, you know, dancing and, um, now, did you actually um, start the class because of the, you know, I'll say the disease or how did, how did that fall into play? 
actually, I, I guess one of the members of um, the church came and uh, called me and asked if they could come and speak to me. And I guess Reverend Chapman wanted to start a line dance class. So I reluctantly <laughs> <laughs> agreed to do it. It was supposed to start off for, you know, several months. And here I am uh, three years later. I just started at the Towers um, actually in March because, <laughs> again, they contacted me, came in and talked to me and said um, that they wanted to do it right in the Towers, which I, I asked, why can't they just come next door to the, you know, to the Family Life Building? Mm -hmm. But I guess he wanted something right in their uh, facility where they could just take the elevator down, come in the community room, and I guess that's working because there's a number of them, not just females, but, mm -hmm. you know, males as well. So, and every week, you, you know, they'll come, to, I can see seniors coming down, they'll look in, and they say, I'll be back next week. <laughs> oh, that's good. That Sounds keeps like them fun. looking yeah, for something. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All so, right. it's, it's a constant challenge, you know. You know, it's no different than children. You know, you have to continually challenge and keep it um, exciting and fun for them. Okay. Now, I know because of, um, you know, um, your class is probably growing. Like, um, how many assistants do you have? A number? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> oh, wow. So, do, I mean, because, you know, so there, there's so many of them. Like, how many are in the class? Oh, um, there could be anywhere from 15, 20, maybe even more. You know, I never counted. I just know that there's lots of bodies out there, you know. And do they come with AIDS or, you know? No. No assistance whatsoever? No. So maybe you're looking for volunteers yourself. Well, it's kind of <laughs> hard to get a volunteer for dance unless they know how to, you know, unless they know how to move, mm -hmm. you know, and, and know the dances because then I'd end up, um, you know, trying to instruct them while I'm trying to instruct the students. Okay, okay. So, um, as far as your dance class, now, would you be willing to, like, if uh, another organization is looking for an instructor, um, being that this is, you know, probably growing, is there a way that, you know, you would step out or? Well, depending upon my schedule, okay. you know. You're very busy. Um, I, I, <laughs> I try to accommodate as much as possible, but you know, I do have the school and I still teach, um, you okay. know, students. And I also teach in the, in the school system, you know, I teach in school okay. in the daytime as well. So, um, you know, I have a busy schedule, but I'm always looking for, you know, students who are interested, really interested in dancing. I mean, they can be trained. It would be, uh, it would be a plus if I had, you know, that assistance. I have two daughters that also um, dance, and I have instructors at the dance studio. However, you know, they're also teachers, and they're spread out, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but yes, that would be a plus if I had an assistant. But right now, it's, it's me. And, okay. you know, and I'm able to handle it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know before we... Um, got started, you also were talking about um, how many years you had left or you're thinking about letting <laughs> it go? Or I'm just hoping that man upstairs will allow me to make three more years to make it 50. Okay. And then, great. then I might start to think about, you know, slowing up a little bit. Okay. I don't know if I'd ever hang up my shoes completely, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, maybe slow down a little bit, you know. Okay. Now, going back to you guys, um, how did you um, get involved? Like, um, did you go to school? Is this your, is it a, a profit for you? Or how did you get started? Well, yeah. the reason I got started is because my grandmother actually has Alzheimer's disease. Mm. So I started off as a volunteer, actually, because um, I wanted to, you know, reach out and serve the community in some way. So that's okay. how I started getting involved. Well, I went back to school to UBA to get my master's in social work mm -hmm. and ended up as an intern at the Alzheimer's Association a couple of years ago and just mm -hmm. found the work so rewarding and really enjoyed working with people who have dementia. And so here I am. 
but it is it's a national nonprofit. <coughs> so the headquarters is in Chicago, but then we have about 70 branches, okay. 70 chapters across the United States, and our local chapter here in Buffalo serves all eight counties here in Western New York. So if you have a family member who lives out of town and they have dementia or Alzheimer's, and you want to find out what services are available to them, that same helpline number, that 24/7 free number, that 1-800-272-3900. You can pick up that number and it directs you to the local office. Okay. So if you live in this area, you live in Buffalo, you're going to get us between 8:30 and 5. After that, you're going to talk to someone in our national office, and we can call you back the next day. But it's just one of those great resources to have, no matter where you are in the country. Okay, yeah. that's very helpful to know. And um, Ms. Barbara, how can we get in touch with you? Well, the school is located um, at 1832 Main Street in the main Delavan's station plaza and you can call the school um, 834-1644 again children through adults and seniors I, um, we recently started a uh, ballroom dance class for couples oh wow and um, it started off as a trial we had three free classes <clears throat> and um, you know, we had such an overwhelming response that uh, the classes will continue on. And um, of course, there's a fee, but um, <laughs> it will start on April the 13th. So if there's couples out there, um, all ages, have to be couples. Ballroom dancing is the one form of dance that you cannot do without a male and a female. It's not like line dancing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank our, our guests for coming on today. And we just hope that um, something that we said would be very helpful to you and, um, you know, very informative. Everybody goes through certain things in life. You, you just never know. So we, we hope that the advocator has shared um, some detailed information with you. Have a great day. Thank you.